Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to another exciting lesson on motion in physics. In this lesson, we are learning about rotational motion. So the first question you might ask is, what is a rotation? An object is rotating when it moves in a circle around a axis that is inside or internal to the object. So some examples include spinning a basketball, like spinning a basketball on your fingers, and a wheel. This is rotating on a moving car. So those are examples of a rotation because the point that it rotates about is inside the object. Spin a wheel, it moves around its axis. Some not examples. These are not examples of a rotation. Include swinging your keys around in a circle. That's circular motion, but not rotational motion. And a turning car. Both of those are examples of something turning around something that is outside of it, not inside. We'll study that situation later on. So if something is rotating, that means that the points that are on the object that make it up are moving in a circle around the axis. And what we want to be able to do is describe the motion of such a point and describe the motion of the object as a whole. So how do we do that? How do we describe rotational motion? Let's consider a simple uh, picture uh, with a point on a rotating merry-go-round. I don't know why I wrote merry-go-wheel. That was crazy. Um, but simple merry-go-round picture. you got an axis in the middle, and it's going to rotate in a circle. And we've got a random point picked like on the right side of the merry-go-round. And let's suppose that this thing is rotating in a counterclockwise direction, kind of sort of like that. And let's suppose that we start caring about this thing at time t equals 0. And then at time t equals 1 second, that point is now kind of sort of at the top of the picture. Now we could describe this using the term distance, which would be that distance there, like we've learned about already. But that's not necessarily the best way to describe it. The reason it's not necessarily the best way to describe it is because another point that is next to that first point but has a smaller radius to travel through will move through a different distance. And so what we want to study today is a way to describe the motion of both points using the same quantity so that they have the same value for that quantity. If I just said what's the velocity of each of those points, you would get different answers. So what we want to try to do today is understand a better way to describe the rotation of this object. The way that we do that is with a term called the angular displacement. So I'm going to kind of redraw my picture here. Go from 0 seconds to 1 second from the right side to the top side. As that point moves, it is moving through an angle like that. And that angle is what we refer to as the angular displacement. So if you remember your um, quadrants from geometry, it goes from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And so that angle that it moves through is called the angular displacement. And in this particular case, the way I've drawn it, eh, it's about 90 degrees, give or take. The way that we symbolize this quantity, because it's a long uh, thing to have to write out all the time, is with the Greek letter theta. Uh, theta is kind of like a zero with a horizontal line drawn through the middle of it. That represents an angle um, in math and science, and um, again, it's called the Greek letter theta. Now we can measure that angle using any angle unit, such as degrees or number of rotations, but the one that's going to be preferable is the radian. Radian is what we're going to use to measure. And we'll see why here in just a second. So if you're not familiar with the radian, you may have heard about this in geometry or pre-cal or something like that, but the radian is really the SI unit for angle measurements, not the degree. So the definition of a radian, if you have an angle where the distance that it sweeps out, so like the distance d, which if you want to use a fancy geometry term, it's called the chord, 
So it's the angle sweeped out by a distance that is equal to the radius. Let's draw a picture to understand. So there's a circle. There's the radius. There's the radius again. So you can see that there's an angle. If that distance is also the radius, so this distance here, if that distance is equal to the radius, then that means that the angle right there is equal to one radian, hence the name radian. So that's the definition of a radian. And what this is going to allow us to do is quickly go back and forth between rotational motion, like we're doing, learning about right now, and linear motion, which we already know about. If my distance that I moved through were now to be 2r, like 2 times the radius, then that means that the angle is 2 radians. The angular displacement is 2 radians. So the radian is a convenient unit for going back and forth between angles and distances, like the highlighted distances there. Now if you have a complete circle, so like the blue line represents a distance of one circumference, then the angle you move through is 2 pi radians. You can kind of see this because you may remember that the distance around the circle, which is called the circumference, is 2 pi times r. And so you've gone 2 pi radians in angle as you go once around the circle. Now a circle is also equal to 360 degrees, and so what we have here is a real convenient way to convert back and forth between the three different measurements. One rotation is equal to 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. That would be something you want to remember, because we may need to convert back and forth between number of rotations, degrees, and radians. So, how does that relate back to linear motion? Again, it's all about using the angle in radians. So the reason that we do that is so that we can quickly go back and forth between linear motion and angular motion. That's the big idea. So, simple example. Let's suppose in this example we move through a angle of one radian. That means that the distance that the object has moved through is equal to the radius. Again, that's just kind of redefining the definition of, the radi of a radian. If the angle that I move through is 2.5 radians, then that means that delta x is equal to 2.5 times the radius. So in general, this is a real important thing to remember as well, I can go back and forth by simply multiplying the angular displacement by the radius to get the linear displacement. And so points that are farther out will have a greater distance that they move through because they have a, a greater radius. That, again, is something you want to remember. So the next thing we need to define is angular velocity. Just like we had linear velocity, which was displacement over time, we also have angular velocity, which is angular displacement over time. You could also say rate of change of angular position over time. The symbol we give for the angular velocity is the Greek letter omega, which kind of looks like a W that's been hammered into a double horseshoe, kind of, sort of. That's the Greek letter omega, lowercase omega, um, and it's simply the angular displacement divided by the time. So that should look kind of familiar, kind of like delta x over delta t equals v, delta theta over delta t equals omega. So omega just kind of takes the place of the v for velocity when we're talking about something that is rotating. Again, if I want to go back and forth between rotational and linear motion, all that I've got to do is multiply the rotational quantity by the radius, and that gives me the linear quantity.
So again, something important to remember. So let's look at a simple example. Suppose I've got this random wheel that has a radius of 0.5 meters and it goes around 10 times every sec every 5 seconds. So in 5 seconds it makes 10 rotations. Uh, the first question we want to know is what is the angular velocity of this wheel? Well I know that angular velocity is delta theta over delta t and I know that delta t is 5 seconds. Now I know what the angular displacement is, it's 10 rotations, but we would rather convert that to radians. So it's important to remember that one rotation is 2 pi radians. And then that gives me 20 pi radians because the rotations will cancel out. So remember those little dimensional analysis tricks to convert from one unit to the other. And so 20 pi radians over 5 seconds, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So that would be 4 pi radians per second. Just kidding about that one. So I think I got that mistake fixed now. Um, and if you want to multiply the 4 pi and get 12.6 or something like that, you can. And again, the unit would be radian per second rather than meters per second, like linear motion. The next question we might want to ask is what is the linear velocity of a point on the edge of the wheel? So like, what is the linear velocity of a point like right there? Like for instance, if the wheel were to be stopped and that represented something that would go flying off, how quickly would it be moving as it moves off? The thing to remember here is that the velocity can be found just by multiplying the angular velocity by the radius. So the radius is 0.5 meters. We found the angular velocity down there to be point, or 4 pi rather, radians per second, which would give us 2 pi meters per second. By the way, a meter times a radian is equal to a meter. Because te technically a radian is a meter over a meter. It doesn't really have a unit, it's just a placeholder. Um, so that gives us 2 pi meters per second, or you can multiply that out to get something like 6.3 meters per second. And by the way, either way to write it is okay. Now let's talk a real quick about sign conventions. Remember that these signs, positive and negative, correspond to directions. So for a rotating object, counterclockwise is generally taken to be the positive direction. So if a wheel like this is spinning at 4 radians per second counterclockwise, then we would indicate that that's positive. If we're spinning clockwise, we would indicate that it's negative. And we'll talk in class about why that is. I'll show you guys with the rotating bicycle wheel. Um, it has to do with the directionality of your right hand, believe it or not. Um, and so that's kind of just our sign convention. It's important to remember that the plus and minus signs only indicate the direction. And so the only time we actually need to worry about that is if we're doing things like adding and subtracting velocities. Um, and so what's really important is just to know what the direction is. So, real quick summary of the quantities we've learned about, comparing linear motion to rotational motion. First important quantity is displacement. Linear displacement is given by the symbol delta x, and it's measured in meters. Rotational displacement is given by the symbol delta theta, and it's measured in radians. And we can go back and forth between the two using that equation, delta x equals r delta theta. The other important quantity is velocity, which is delta x over delta t if we're talking linear, and is measured in meters per second. It's delta theta over delta t if we're talking rotational motion, and it is given in the units radians per second, and that symbol for it is the Greek letter omega.
And again, multiply omega by r to get the velocity. So this table right here is going to be real important to go back and add to as we learn more about motion and later on force, momentum, and energy. So we have a good way to compare linear and rotational motion. Your first uh, question in class next time is basically going to be to kind of draw some similarities and differences between the two. And this would be a good place to start. So that's the end of this lesson. As always, if you have questions, write them down right away so that you don't forget them. And be sure to ask those questions in class. In class, we'll be doing some more practice so that we can get better using this material. Um, and so hopefully, if there's any uncertainty, we can eliminate it in class. Till next time, ta-ta.